the evidence of evolution. Number one is biogeography. As you hear the word, bio means life. Geography means uh, distribution in different locations. So when you talk about, uh, it means that you have life which has been distributed in different locations. So look at these camels. They have the same ancestor, but they have gone to different areas. When they went to different areas, this one here, this one there, this one there, this one there. So they modify. So this helps or it brings about organisms to adapt uh, differently. So uh, if you look at them, you will know when and how did this species uh, evolve. Why is it that you have um, uh, different colors in humans? So you can use by geography because they are located in different environments. Eh? People from hot areas, you'll find out that they have different skin color. So that can help us to know how did these organisms evolve. Number two is fossil records. Fossils remains of uh, living organisms. When you die, you become bones. So the bones will become remains. And if it happens that it takes for a long period of time and then other generation come and then they try to find your bones, and then maybe the generation is uh, different, then they will study them and they say, oh, okay, in this time, people who lived on this earth, they were like this, just using your remains so that they can now predict how life was by them. So that's what's called the fossil records. If you look at this, it shows that um, the, the, the layers of the earth, the lower layer will have the simplest form and the upper layer will have the more complex form it shows evolution because increase in the complexity from simple to complex so it means that the simpler one they existed before and then the more complex one they existed just recently so if you look at this horse you find out that the skull you find in different strata uh, of soil different strata strata means layer in science when you say stratum it means uh, layer. So when it says strata, means layers. So different strata, uh, you'll find out that simple will be in the lower and then the more complex one will be in the upper layers. So fossils remains have been found in rocks of all uh, ages. Fossils of the simplest, uh, where do you find them? you find them in the oldest rocks. Simplest, oldest rock. And then fossils of more uh, complex organisms are found in new waste rocks. You find them here, you see? And then you are saying that this supports the down theory of evolution, which says that simple life forms gradually evolve into more complex one. Like simple life forms, they evolve into a more complex one. That's why I said that you find out that you are more complex than your, your, your parents, yes? You are more complex than your parents it means that you evolve from simple to a more complex uh, uh organism you have another evidence uh which shows that evolution really took place which you call the comparative um anatomy when you talk about comparative anatomy uh this sometimes you call it modification by descent you modify as you you, you shift from one generation to the next generation um, if you look at this, this deal with uh, similarities and the differences in anatomy. Anatomy is the body structure. Eh? How, how do you, if you look at um, your body, how, how is the shape of, of, of it? Yes, if your shape is not the same as that of um, a cow, it's not the same as uh, that of um, um, uh, a pig. Eh? Yeah, it's, it's, they are not the same. But if you look at the, 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 the anatomy, the inside, the inside part, they ha might have some similarities. So if they have some similarities, then it means that these organisms, at least they had some um, line of uh, ancestry. So they have some common ancestor somewhere, somewhere, but they diverged. Eh? They modified as, uh, or as different generation came up. So when you talk about um, uh, organisms with the same ancestor have the same anatomical plan, this is what you call the pentadactyl limbs. Penta means five, dactyl means thick. It comes from the word digits. So if you look at your hand, you'll find out that you have uh, five digits. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah? Your legs or your feet, they are five. Yeah? They are five 
toy. Oh, they are, yes. So if you look at them, there are five. So if you look at a monkey, it has five. So if you look at um, this uh, picture, you will find out that you have um, human, you have five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. If you look at a cat, it has five. One, two, three. They have five. If you look at a whale, yes. If you look at it outside, it is it is different. But if you look at its anatomy, that's why we say that we compare the anatomical plan or structure. If you look at its anatomy inside, you'll find out that it also has five. One, two, three, four, five. If you look at a cow, it also have has five. Uh, but some of them are fused. If you look at a chicken, it has a five. You see them three, one, two, three in front, another one is behind, making them four, another one is uh, somewhere, somewhere here on top. Yes, so there are five. So all those, it shows that at least maybe we have some line of um, ancestry. So it means that we shared an ancestor at a certain time T. So if we study this, it helps us to know who came from who and who diverted from who. So it shows that evolution took place. If you look at this, but it's also, it has five, five, five of them, if you count them. So you can compare many animals, most especially um, uh, the, the, the vertebrates. Most of them, they have almost the same anatomical plan, which shows that vertebrates came from the same ancestor, but we try to divide to different, to different areas you, you, you go to different areas, that's why you call it divergent evolution. You, you, you start with the same ancestor, but you go to different areas, and then you, 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 you modify yourself. Get an example. Um, if it is a cat, it is modified to, 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 ca to, to capture uh, a prey. If you look at a whale, it is modified into um, uh, swimming. If you look at um, a bat, it is modified to, 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 to fly. You understand? So it means that if you look at um, uh, these structures, it shows that evolution took place. You also try to do the same. If you go in water, you will find out that you won't walk uh, the same way you walk on land. You will try to imitate um, the, 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 the what? Um, the, the fish which are found in water. If you go to air, you try to fly like um, a bat. So basically, that's how uh, what you call the comparative um, uh, anatomy uh, looks like. Uh, it means that all vertebrates we share a common ancestor, but we went to different environment and then we try to modify according to where we we we, we went to. And then, uh, if you have almost the same same structure, then it means that you almost share the same the same uh, environment where you are staying. So uh, another evidence is genetic evidence. When you talk about genetic evidence, uh, you're talking about uh, the genes. So we are saying that one of the strongest evidence for common descent come from the gene sequence. Like how, how? If you have the genes which are almost the same, then it means that we share um, a common answer. Oh, the line of descent is just recent. It means that you just diverged from each other just recently. But if you have different genes, uh, the percentage of similarity is too small, then it means that you diverged long, long, long time ago. So you're saying that organisms are likely to have common ancestor if they have, number one, identical DNA structure. You find out that uh, chimpanzee, they share almost 98% of DNA with humans. Then it means that we are related to chimpanzees. So, um, similar sequence of genes, it means that the way how they are sequenced, it means that the way how they are aligned. So, if you have the same sequence, then it means that we share a common ancestor. <clears throat> similar portion of DNA within, with no uh, functions. We have what you call the no-sense DNA. <coughs> no-sense DNA is the part of DNA which doesn't have any function. It's just there, but it can be mutated. When it is mutated, then it means that uh, it can have another. It can have a function uh, in 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 those organisms where that mutation has taken place. But uh, the biggest percentage of DNA uh, has no function. And then you're saying that 
similar mutations. We have some similar mutations. We will see this when you are talking about the out of Africa hypothesis that human beings originated from East Africa. So East Africa is the mother. Then if you look at uh, this picture, uh, this picture shows the different um, genes which are in different organisms and the differences. This shows the differences, the percentage in differences of, uh, of the gene. Humans with another human, a human with another human, they have 0% difference uh, in the genes in terms of uh, the hemoglobin. And then humans with the chimpanzee, they have one percent difference. Then it means that oh, humans and chimpanzee, we are all almost the same. And then humans and monkeys, they have eight percent. It means that yes, we are almost the same, but the monkeys are a little bit uh, different from humans compared to the chimpanzee. And then rats, we have uh, twenty-seven percent. It means that one day we and the rats we are the same organisms, but we diverge long time, and then this it created twenty-seven percent. What about humans and pigs? I've not talked about them. And then they have a very uh, big similarity. So it means that you guys, when you're eating, make sure that you eat what is supposed to be eaten. No, don't eat your brothers and sisters. OK, um, we are saying that you have frogs. Frogs, we are two different, 67%. Chicken, eh? two different, eh? 45 eh? is it's, it's still big. You can eat, it's fine. Uh, but chimpanzee, you can eat chimpanzee. Ah, uh, you're eating. Uh, this is a real, real problem. So, but in the Chinese, they told me that in Chinese gorillas or all those things they eat. So basically, that is genetic evidence. It shows that if you have the similarities, then it means that you have, you have, you have uh, lines of descent. Is it clear? Uh, by the way, did you know that? Um, Humans, let me tell you something. This is a little bit different. Did you know that humans and the monkeys, they're almost the same people, the same organism? Yes, you share 8% difference. No, 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 92% similarities and 8% difference. Did you know that humans have blood group D, which you call the rhesus, rhesus blood group? Blood group. That's why they say that your blood group A positive. Blood group B positive. Oh, blood group B negative. Means that if your blood group A positive, I don't mean HIV. No, I mean blood group A positive. You have a rhesus, a rhesus blood group, which called blood group D, which was discovered in a rhesus monkey. That's why it's called people who are who are not uh, producing. Like you marry someone and then you keep on having uh, uh, miscarriages, miscarriages. Okay, that's his genetics. Though it's a part of genetics, but I'm not going to talk about that. But that is genetics. If we go back to genetics, you will ask about that. I'll explain how this happened and how you can solve that. But it shows that if you humans have blood group D, uh, which is rhesus blood group, and then also monkey has the, it means that they have the blood group of the monkeys called the rhesus monkeys. Don't you see that we are all almost the same? So those are our brothers and sisters. <laughs> Another one is saying that comparative embryology. Here you are describing or we are comparing the embryo of different organisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys, uh, if you look at, let me just bring it before even I start talking about it. Uh, here you have different embryos. If I, I, I cover this part, you won't be able to tell me that this is human, this is a rabbit, this is a cow, this is a pig. You see that you and the pig, you are almost the same. Huh? Uh, you and the calf, you are almost the same. You and the rabbit, you are almost the same. Huh? So it means that we have a common ancestor. One scientist, um, American scientist said, or say that uh, ontogeny recaptures phylogeny, which means that uh, history repeats itself. When you say ontogeny recaptures phylogeny, in, in English, we say that history repeats itself. What does it mean in actual sense? What does it mean? It means that during our uh, life development, we repeat our evolutionary trends. We repeat our evolutionary trends. So you keep on repeating what you went through during evolution. That's why uh, we are saying that at a certain time T, you had a tail. That's why when you are developing, you have a tail. At a certain time T, you stayed in water. That's why you have gills. And gills, we use them for uh, 
gills are used by organisms which are found in water. That's why when you go, you, 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 you drown in water, you cannot uh, stay there alive. Why? Because you don't have gills. The gills have been modified into lungs. But the fish will stay there. You understand? So it means that if you have a gill in your developmental stages, then it means that at one time T, you had the gills. So now uh, we are saying that the study of the development of uh, anatomy of organisms to suit uh, to its adult form, provide evidence for evolution as embryo formation in wide, uh, widely uh, divergent groups of uh, organisms tend to be uh, conserved. It means that you keep on or you conserve those stages you went through during uh, evolution. For example, uh, the vestigial structures such as tails or gills. Vestigial means those uh, structures which had a function before, but they are no longer they are no longer there. So it shows that at a certain time thing you had the tails. So because the tail is not important to us, we call it vestigial. So it decreased, it disappeared. Vestigial structures. So the tail is a vestigial structure. Yes. Gills, we no longer having gills, they modify into lungs. In human can be found in embryos early stage of our, our development. So because we share or we look like other organisms, chicken, tortoise, salamander, fish, it means that all these organisms had a same ancestor at a certain time t but we evolved into different species um another evidence is uh cultural evidence this is basically uh linked to humans it shows uh how humans used to have uh to use these um tools when you talk about um we will see in human evolution we have different stages we have the homo habilis uh, and then homo erectus when you talk about homo habilis in english it means that Handeman, the people who used to like using tool, using fire. So this is the period. So if you find this in South Africa, then it means that those organisms or those humans were um, staying in South Africa. And then we can calculate how many years ago did those organisms which used um, those tools existed. So if you do the line of, um, or we link them, we can see that uh, evolution took place. And then we see that these were humans, but they try to evolve to uh, a more advanced um, organisms, which you call Homo sapiens.